Ugh, I'm getting old. Welcome to Keto on the Couch with Rachel and Joe. This is episode 51. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 300 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2 That's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah. So what do you have here, sir? I have... Not coffee. I have coffee. Nope, nope. This is some F-bomb bone broth. So we obviously, we love the kettle and fire bone broth, but sometimes I just want like kind of an instant thing, something I could take with me, mm -hmm. you know, maybe just a little something. So it's powdered. This is a powdered bone broth. So I figured we can kind of give it a little review. I have not even tried it yet. We've had it sitting, but then we had our fast and everything else and we never got to try it. So this is the Cajun beef version. Ooh, so you it's You want to take like, your first taste and does, then I'll take some? Does it have like a... a a kick to it? I haven't tried it yet, but I'm assuming with Cajun it's got a kick. Woo mama. That is good. That is good. Now the heat is the throat heat. Yeah, it's a little it's bit of a throat heat. not the tongue heat. So the ingredients in this wow. are beef bone broth uh, protein spice blend, which is salt, spices, paprika, garlic, onion, cayenne pepper, silicon dioxide, sunflower oil, potassium chloride, Himalayan rock salt, and uh, cal dicalcium phosphate and magnesium citrate. Now it does have some sunflower oil, but I think that's part of the spice blend itself. Probably. Because it does say the nutrition on this is 40 calories for a scoop. There's 30 servings in this bag. Are they like individual bags? No, it's like a scoop. Oh, okay. And then it is zero grams of fat, 10 grams of protein, zero grams of carbohydrates. So that sunflower oil has got to be just a touch in part of the spices. Probably. But uh, yeah, this is pretty good. Very tasty. It does say it's made from real bone broth, sourced from grass-fed pasture-raised beef, free from hormones and, an and additives, non-GMO, zero carbs per serving. So I there like is it. a link for this down in the description. And uh, there's also a coupon code. It's two crazy ketos. And I think that gets you 10% off. If I remember, it's 10% off. I love their meat sticks, too. I love the F-bomb products, period. But enough about that. So it, this is episode 51. We are almost a year almost into this. Almost a year of doing Keto on the Couch. Just a week away. I, one more week. Next week is the year anniversary. We're going to have to do something for the one-year anniversary of we, Keto on the Couch. What are you getting me for our anniversary? I don't know. Well, I know what you're getting for your anniversary next year. Oh, what's that? We, or actually I did without even asking permission, um, made reservations and we are next year going to go on the low carb cruise. Okay, so this is something that you don't need to have permission for. Like that was a good purchase, <laughs> sir. That was a good decision. So yeah, so May 2021, we're gonna go on the low carb cruise. I'm gonna leave all of the information down below. So we're gonna go on it. And first of all, it'll be cool to go on it. And I like the fact that it's a year away. It is leaving out of Galveston, Texas. So of course, the one time that we finally decide to go on a cruise. Cause I've never been on a like cruise. All the cruises always go out of Florida, right? Unless you're going to Alaska. Not this one. And of course, we finally make the decision, we're gonna go on a cruise and it's not leaving out of Florida. I'm not upset about that. It means I'm going to get to see two places, which yeah. is exciting. So yeah, that is next year. It's in May and it's going like to Mexico, going to a bunch of different places. We're super excited about it. And the, the cabin started about like, don't quote me on the exact amount. It's like $1,680 for an inside cabin. But that's for the whole cabin, so based on two people. So I thought it was really good. Can I stay with you? Yeah, of course you can stay oh, with okay, me. Oh, okay, good. And then in addition to that, you have to pay for the low-carb event. And if you book right now, between now and March 30th, it's only $100. Whereas that's a deal. after that, it goes up to, I want to say it was either 120 or 150 and then up to 175 after June. So if you're thinking Still about not. going... You know, go ahead and book now. You're going to get the cheapest price there. You'll know you're going to be able to go. But still not bad if you have to wait in. 
a hundred dollars for a low carb conference, I think is really cool. Cause I mean, KetoCon is like $300. Seriously. And this is a seven day cruise. And you get to hang out with a bunch of low carb people like, you know, Jenny Moore, I know the bears from Keto Chow are going. I'm really so excited. Now we're trapped on a boat with these people. You, they'll be trapped in a boat with us. What are you talking <laughs> about? Like how? I mean, I feel sorry for them already, but um, we're not affiliated with this. We're not speaking nope. at this. We're passengers. We really wanted to go. We talked about it this year, but we didn't know anybody who was really going this year. And now with everything going else going on with the coronavirus and everything, I'd rather wait a year anyway. But. It's really cool because it's right around our anniversary. It's only yeah. a week after our anniversary and Rachel has never been on a cruise. So I am gonna start taking my anti-nausea medication right now. <laughs> like just right now, just be safe. Cause that is my biggest fear is that I'm gonna barf. You'll be fine. Like the entire time. It's a pretty big boat. And I believe the boat is Royal Caribbean too. So that's like one of the good cruise lines. Anybody got some anti-nausea tips? I would love to have those. Yeah, so let us know down in the comment section if it's something you're thinking about doing. And even if you're not going, let us know in the comment section if you've ever been on a cruise and where your favorite place to cruise to is. I'd also like to know what are their tips for, for keto cruising? Yeah. Because I'm not looking to derail my progress on this boat. Yeah, because obviously this is a, it, it's called a low carb cruise, but it's not everybody on the cruise is low carb. There's 3,000 people on the boat. There's probably like 150 or 200 people going to the conference itself. So I could act a fool on this thing if mm -hmm. I wanted to. If you want to. If I wanted to blow everything, blow my progress. If you want to. I yeah. could do it. Yeah. I'm not going to because they're going to give me tips on how not to. That's true. So another thing that's going on is, like you said, we had almost, we have about 300 new subscribers in the last week. Thank you guys, hello. We're almost at 9,000 subscribers. As a matter of fact, it may be 9,000 by the time this Keto on the Couch airs on Monday, because today is Saturday. How awesome, so it is Saturday, but you see I've already got my Irish shirt on, because I am heading into it's March. It's not March yet. I, it's almost, tomorrow. Tomorrow's March. I'm ready for it. <laughs> So yeah, almost at 9,000 subscribers and start helping us push because we are going to do some kind of a giveaway. I don't know what yet. I'm gonna contact a couple of companies, but we're gonna do some kind of a giveaway for 10,000 subscribers. So get us there, guys. So get us there. Keep liking all the videos, sharing everything, You know, make sure you're leaving comments, things like that, joining us on the live streams, which is every Thursday at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. We had a good shareable video, I think this week, based on the comments that we've yes, gotten. Yes, we did. Which is, what are some keto food, keto food, mm -hmm. that could trip you up? Yeah. So if you're looking to share something, get our, our name out there, share that video. Yeah, if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link over Rachel's head. And it was something that just came to me because honestly, it's something I've been struggling with lately. I mean, we talked about all those things, but we came off of the fast, I was doing great. Lacrosse season went full force this week. I mean, it started last week, but this week was full force. Games every single day, couple days with two games. And this coming week, is even crazier. I literally have double headers every single day except for one. We're short officials. We have one guy whose brother got run over by a car. Oh my gracious. And uh, so he's taking care of his brother. Yeah. And then we have like three other officials who are injured. Our assigner had a knee replacement surgery. So all of Broward County, we only have nine officials right now. It's Just kind of scary. Pray for these guys. And so with all of that, I have just been in a snacky snack mood. Like all day long, I just want to eat. It's because I'm getting home super late at night and I'm trying to not eat at night. I only had one day where like I ate really late because I didn't eat all day. But I don't know, all day long, I just want to snack and snack and snack and snack. And so we made that video of like, look at all these things that I should be, could be snacking on and that's gonna really derail my progress. We have lived through all of those obstacles. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, anything that we're presenting, it's something that we've deal dealt with, right? right? You know, I mean, we, we've experienced it. That's why we know it's the truth. Yeah, there's some of those things I have dealt with where I've had issues with them 
And there's some of the things that you've had issues with, like you were talking about with the nuts yeah. and the heavy cream. Absolutely. But can I share a victory? Am I allowed to have a victory when, when maybe you're having a little bit of struggle? I mean, you yeah. did you did experience a non-scale victory this week in that your chest is healing up nicely from your burn and you saved your nipple. Yeah, I saved really, my nipple. Really excited about that. So if you didn't see, not this past week, but the week before, on about 10 minutes before our live stream, I spilled a blender bottle this much full of hot water, which I know, there shouldn't have been hot water in there with right. the lid closed. I know. Down my whole chest. Fortunately, it was only like first degree burns. It turned out to be, with the exception of one little spot on my nipple, um, like pretty much just a really, really, really bad sunburn. So it all peeled. Now it's kind of weird because there's this whole section that's tan and the rest <laughs> isn't. <laughs> Looks like a Rachel sunburn. That's how I sunburn every single time. Some bizarre like pattern on, on, well, not on my chest because yeah. I'm not like topless, but, but like on my arms, on my neck. Well, I mean, cause people ask, please don't, <laughs> please don't do that. Rachel, put your shirt on. But yeah, so, but that was a little dicey with your it, nipple it there. It was definitely dicey, was but I'm doing a lot better. Thank you for everybody for your concerns and your prayers. Cause it, it was kind of scary when it happened. Cause I mean, it was my whole chest and my leg, piece of my forearm. It's funny you talk about the sunburns. Like Rachel, yeah, she will like sit down in a chair like this. By the way, welcome to our backyard at yeah. daytime. I know. I'm we decided so it's cool out today. It's only like sixty degrees, it's which is wonderful cold today for, for the end of February, beginning of March in you Florida. I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt because I'm getting all of the value out of it. Right. But yeah, Rachel will sit down on a chair like this and she'll burn back here. Yeah. I don't know how. I'm looking at the sun. I'm hoping this isn't too bad, but look at how the sun is like shining on your legs. So I will have a sunburn. Hopefully we're not too bad. Underneath my jeans with the pattern of these stars and things on my knee. Yeah. Guaranteed. Well, Anthony last week got that sunburn. So even though he's not your biological kid, he's just like you. He's getting burns in like weird places. Nature versus nurture. Nurture for the win. <laughs> So I yes, non-scale victory. Yes, I wanted to share my non-scale victory, and that is usually when I'm done with a fast, I lose momentum almost <clears throat> immediately, right? Because the addict in me has a binge and purge mentality, right. and that has been the case over and over again. So we got done with a 115-hour fast, and usually my modus operandi is to reward myself for good behavior with bad behavior. Right. I immediately need to celebrate and do a lot of the snacks. And I'm sorry that like you've been struggling with the snacks, but at least you've been running 10 or 15 miles a day. Yeah. I will begin snacking and not run 10 <laughs> or 15 miles a day. So this week I decided I can do this. You know, another obstacle that's usually a problem is we're starting a new series in Coastal Kids. So I was working even harder than usual. Yeah. So again, the thing I usually do is reward myself for my hard work at work, right? Yeah. So I should get more snacks. So I really had the potential for going off the rails like I normally do after a fast, that binge and purge attitude. And what I did was I decided, no, I'm gonna stick to my life app I'm going to keep my window, my eating window really really tight. I've been almost 17 to 24 hours fasting every single day, staying on meal plan, not doing any snacks, and I have been able to hold on to the results that I experienced during my fast. Yeah, you've been really good. I've been super proud of you. I'm Thank worried you. about the lighting, but Should we move it? No, I think we're we're going to try. We'll we'll just keep watching. But Last night, so yesterday, back up, yesterday I had lunch or we had lunch mm -hmm. early, like one o'clock because I knew I had a game at seven and it was a big game. So I, I figured if we eat lunch at like one o'clock, that'll give me enough to digest. But I was like, this isn't going to be my only meal. I'm going to have a little bit longer eating window because I'm not doing a tiny eating window every single day. I'm trying to vary it up a yeah. little bit. And so what did we eat yesterday? I, I don't even remember Taco. what we ate. Taco we bowl. ate a taco bowl, which was great. We each had a pound of ground beef. We put chipotle to shame. With, yeah, on top of a bed of lettuce with some shredded cheese that we shredded. It wasn't like a bag shred. Mm -hmm. Some sour cream, 
a little bit of that salsa, that hot fire salsa that from, was good. Uh, that comes from Aldi's. It's really, really good. Super clean ingredients. Guacamole. And then some guacamole. So that was lunch. And then I got home at about nine o'clock. You came in just a couple minutes after me. And I said, well, I'm going to eat the rest of my calories. And I made a keto chow ice cream in the Vitamix using our little thing. But I used heavy cream. The recipe for that or how we do it is over Rachel's head it's right really now. It's really good. It's, but it's super easy because it's like instant ice cream, but with keto chow. Except I think you use root beer flavor. I did. Well, I love root beer, especially for an ice cream. Chocolate toffee. But I used heavy cream, which did not sit well with me this morning. I, oh. I don't do well with heavy cream. I always put two or three pounds on overnight when I drink a lot of heavy cream. But I asked you if you wanted some keto chow ice cream to finish out your day and you were like, no, I'm good. It's past my eating window. Of course I wanted some, yes. I mean, you, you ice cream, yes, I always want some. But yeah, I, I have decided that instead of rewarding myself with food, I'm going to reward myself with maintaining my success. I do deserve a reward for working hard. I do deserve a reward and a celebration and I'm gonna get it through maintaining my success. That is what Rachel deserves. Right. Let me pause right here and adjust the camera because of the sun and the way it's set. It's I'm, I'm going rising, but it's actually setting, but it's coming from over there. Okay, we had to move things around thanks to the sun and uh, Sorry about this. Our wall probably needs paint. We need to repaint the house. You know, we changed out our sliding glass door. We put a sliding glass door in. And uh, amongst everything else we need to do, I need to paint the house. It's on the list. It's on the list. The, the honey long, list. long, long honeydew list. One year, I'll get to them all. I ain't worried about it. You may see Grayson. Yeah. Is he there? He likes to, to look out the window and see what we're doing when we're on the patio. Yeah, whenever we's on, we're on the patio, he will come out of the cage, climb around to the back here. He'll pull the curtain to side and stare at us and like watch us and talk to us through the glass door. It's kind of hilarious. It's, yeah, it's, I love it. So, so back to what we were talking about. We were talking about your non-scale victory. Yes, yeah, so basically just having good behavior is a victory for me because I usually don't experience good behavior after I do an extended fast. I did want to add something on. So when we did the video on, on the 12 keto foods that might be causing you to stall or gain weight, there was one more that we talked about, we forgot to put it in, but I think it is a really important one and I'm only bringing it up because a lot of people asked about it in that comment section. We said like, is there another one that we missed? And one of them is alcohol. Yeah. So, and we're not even talking about the low carb beers and wines. That's another whole story because they do have carbs in them. And let's face it, you know, a glass of wine has like two to three carbs if you get the drier wines, mm -hmm. but a glass is four ounces. I used to love wine. I just gave up wine when we started keto. We used to love wine. I liked sweet wine. You I'm, liked the rosés, the Zinfandels, Moscato. the Moscatos, things like that. But my idea of a glass of wine was a one quart mason jar filled with ice and fill that thing all the way to the top. We're super classy. Yeah. P.S. So like a four ounce, like I loved the taste of wine. So four ounces was never going to be my limit. Like sugar ginger ale. So yeah. <laughs> so we just decided to, we're not doing wine anymore just because I didn't feel like I was ever going to get the satisfaction for those, you know, two, three, four carbs. But if you are on keto and you do like alcohol, you can drink hard liquors. Things like <laughs> go rum. Straight, go straight to hard liquor. <laughs> yeah, rum, vodka, tequila, you know, your, uh, some of your brandies, you know, the scotches, things like that. You can drink that. However, there is an issue with drinking alcohol and I think it's really important to kind of tack on to the 12 things. Yeah. And that is, when you drink alcohol, your body is going to deal with that alcohol above all else. So if you're in ketosis mm -hmm. and you're burning fat and you drink alcohol, the alcohol itself, if you drink a zero carb alcohol and don't mix it with like orange juice, I'm talking about you drink a zero yeah. carb, 
your body won't get kicked out of ketosis because you had too many carbs. However, it is going to put on hold, like, hey, pause, we can't make ketones right now. Because really, it sees the alcohol as poison. Right. So it wants to deal with that first. So it's gonna get rid of that first. So if you are drinking every night, or even every other night, there's a good chance you are severely slowing down your progress, depending on how much alcohol you're drinking, because your body is constantly like, I gotta get rid of this alcohol first, and it could take 12 to 24 hours for it to completely deal with it and get back to converting the fat into ketones. So yeah. it's just something to be aware of. If you've got a lot of weight to lose, you might wanna consider holding off on that alcohol for a few months. If you're hitting a stall and you're consuming alcohol, maybe- Take a look at it. Take a couple weeks off, see what kind of reaction you get and use it as maybe a once a week thing, once every couple weeks, maybe even a once a month thing until you get to where you wanna be. Put a fence around it. Yeah, you absolutely have to put a fence around it. But honestly, you have to put a fence around everything, yeah. right? I mean, we you hear the term all the time, like everything in moderation, which I don't necessarily agree with everything in moderation. I don't think that there is like, you can have sugar in moderation. I mean, sugar is bad. The little bit of sugar Cheating is on bad. your husband. Cheating on your husband. Moderation. There is no such thing as like a little bit is okay. I do believe though that everything that you do consume should be with moderation. I mean, we talk about it's gonna be very difficult to overeat your beef or overeat vegetables or overeat bacon or overeat eggs, like the good whole foods, your body's gonna shut it off. But when it comes to me as an addict, don't tell me something is unlimited because I will find a way to overconsume it. Yeah, I mean, me too. And I think a lot of times our natural response is, well, that's not fair. Right. Everybody else is getting to do whatever they want. It's just not fair. You look at Anthony, like lucky. Like I, I sometimes look at him and go like, the kid weighs 168 pounds, he eats bread, he eats sugar. And you're like, you wanna say, well, he is so lucky. He doesn't deal with the obesity issues that we deal with. He's also like moving like constantly and- He's 19 years old. He's 19 years old. Well, even he and I were talking when we were going to a game yesterday and he was saying that he was really glad that it was lacrosse season because he was starting to creep up on the scale himself because he wasn't moving, he wasn't as mobile and this is the time for him to get off what he calls his hibernation right. weight. So first of all, I think that we need to get that out of our mind, that whole, like some people are lucky and some people aren't. You know, we're going into March and that's kind of the way we handle it, right? Some people are lucky. Right. Nobody's lucky and, and it's not good to covet anybody's experience. I can remember being very covetous of someone thinking that they had this great metabolism that I wanted and I wanted their life so much. And that, that person, um, actually passed away from stomach cancer, that, that they had no idea that they were dealing with it. And it's like, well, did I covet that? Right. You know, I mean, you don't want to, to say, hey, I want that other person's walk because it's so much easier for them. We don't know what their walk is like. We don't know what they're experiencing. It's important for us to live our own life and not, you know, think about, well, other people are so lucky. You want success, it takes hard work. Mm -hmm. If I want success, it means making a million choices a day and deciding I'm gonna do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And not just once a day, but a million times. Every time I say no to the keto chow ice cream when it's outside my weed eating window, when I say no, I'm gonna wait, this is this is where my you know my fasting is, when I say yes to eating the right thing and no to the snack, those are those are not lucky decisions. Those are really purposeful decisions. Yeah. And I look at like this week, this is probably one of our busiest weeks because number one, we have lacrosse season. And like you were saying, you know, we started a new series this weekend at church and the week coming up to a new series is always super busy for us. crazy. It's kind of crazy because I've got to get everything ready for the computer, which takes 40 or 50 hours. Rachel's got to go to the church and she's got to get all the rooms, switch everything over. I've got to get everything loaded up into the computer. Then you add it on, it's a busy time of the year for us. Yeah. And like it's lacrosse season and you've had a lot of shipping. So 
my feeling is, is that if you could manage it this week, like we've got this so long as we don't let our emotions get a hold of us. And the result has been the scale's not creeping up. We've been sleeping well. We've been eating some good food. I mean, talk about some of the food we ate this week. We had the Taco Bell. The, the Taco Bell. It was Taco. It wasn't Taco Bell, but it was like Taco Bell, right? It was, it was a Taco Bowl that well, we made. Better than Taco Bell because the meat was real meat. Right. Sometimes that Taco Bell meat, I'm not sure what that is. I, I can't even remember. We used to have Horse? Taco Bell so much. I mean, we one time went to Taco Bell and ordered the entire menu. And I am not exaggerating. We told them. Just to do we it. Went, we wanted two of every single thing on the menu. And we went home and I mean, it wasn't just us, it was the boys too, but that was still a lot of food for five people. Only, it was only like $6 though. I, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think about the amount of Taco Bell we used to eat, I mean, it was just insane. But off of Taco Bell. So we had the Taco Bowl. What else, we went, we had chicken wings one day. Mm -hmm. We had eggs one day. We had some amazing hamburgers. I had cowboy burgers. We had the cowboy burgers. And then when we're done with this video, I've got a three pound prime rib because ribeye is on sale this week at Whole Foods for $9.99 a pound. So I went in and I'm like, I'm not gonna do a big giant prime rib. I'm like, I just want the biggest steak that you have, the biggest, thickest ribeye you have. And it is, it is like this big. I think you put a picture on Instagram of it. It is the steak that all the other steaks in the meat uh, counter are afraid of. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. So we, I smoked it last night for like an hour and a half, two hours. It's been in the sous vide for about 18 hours now. And as soon as we're done filming, we're gonna be eating that. And then I'm starting a brisket for tomorrow. So Yum. we're gonna have brisket tomorrow. I mean, yeah, we're, we're, we're eating well and because we're not eating all the snacky snacks and everything like that, and we're everything is just a little bit here or there. No better time than the present to deal with stress eating. Mm -hmm. Not just to let it go by the wayside, but to be like, you know what? Let's just handle this right now. Right. I just remembered, since you were talking about keto chow and uh, the root beer, this week, keto chow's root beer float is on sale and it's 20 percent off joe's excited i'm super excited about that and the link is down below in the description but some good news and some bad news okay. i got a message from them yesterday somebody hacked our coupon code what so they took our coupon code and they posted it on some like one of those websites like here's a list of coupons so they had to change our coupon code Okay. So our coupon code for Keto Chow is now 2KK family, Aww. which will get you 10% off. But here's the good news. Okay. Keto Chow's coupon code is only good one time per email. But if you have used our coupon code before, like the old one, the two <gasps> crazy ketos. This is a new one. This is a new coupon code. So what they told me was, even if you've used it before, since you now have a new code, you can go ahead and use it and it will stack. So if you want to get like the root beer float, you can stack the 10% on top of that. You can also stack that on top of the 5% off that you get when you buy four bags or more. So you nice. could literally go get like two bags of root beer float, a bag of vanilla, a bag of chocolate toffee, get the 20% off the root beer float, 5% off all four bags, free shipping, and then 10% off on top of that. I feel like this is the epitome of what the enemy f meant for evil, God will turn for good. Yeah. <laughs> Plus you get to learn how Joe does all his couponing. You just stack upon stack upon stack He's upon stack. He's a stacker. Stack. Yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to let you guys know that. So if you've used our code before, you can use the new code. Again, it's 2KK family. I'm gonna leave it down below. You only get to use it one time though. So I would wait until there's like a big deal and combine it with the sale or something like that. I love it. So do you want to do comments? Yes, please. Okay. So if you're new to our channel, we have our Facebook family group, which there's a link down below. We which love you guys. There's like 2000 people in there. The best people in the whole wide world. And uh, yeah, people go in there, they share their stories, recipes, deals they find. Encouragement. Encourage each other. So we do encourage you if you're new to our channel to go join. And we like to pull 
some of our um, some of the stories that we see and we like to discuss them here because our feeling is is that your story is going to impact somebody. There is somebody who is going through what you're going through. Your and, very unique experience. Right, and when they see your story, they're gonna get encouraged by that. So yeah. the link for that is down below. All I also meant to tell you, like for all of our new pa Patreons, thank you very much. Yes. And uh, your Patreon rewards will be shipping out this week. I'm so, so excited. Thank you very much for all of that. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the subscriber of the weeks. We The first one we have is kind of just a little uh, progress update. I love progress okay, updates. Okay, this one is from Melanie. Hey, Melanie. Uh, it's Princess Ninja Keto. And she said, louder for you in the back. Here is a reminder that just because your scale is a jerk yes. doesn't mean that you're not losing weight. And it's just some pictures of January 1st, 2019, 195 Ooh. pounds. Uh -huh. Look at her pants there, not buttoning. Look at her here with her shirt up. And then February 17th, 2019 at 195 pounds. Same weight. I love it. But obviously a lot smaller, buckling the pants and everything you else. You look incredible. And yes, I love that you've shared that because that is such a frustration. I've experienced that myself. In fact, I've gone down in the past like only literally a couple of pounds, like one or two pounds, and gone down multiple sizes. I remember even your second bout coming on to keto, I, yep. I say bow, but so if you didn't know this, Rachel quit keto once, and then I got her to come back six months later, and after six weeks, you were gonna quit again, because the scale had only dropped four pounds after six weeks, which by the way, is very good. I mean, you're supposed to lose a half a pound a week. But I wanted to see the dump. But she you know? wanted to see the dump, and she didn't, which I didn't expect she would, considering she fasted for an entire month, so what are you gonna dump? No more water weight to get rid of. But she did go from like, I don't know, was it, was it like a size eight to a size four? Very quickly. Right. So only four pounds, but a size eight to a size four. So but you were gonna quit because you only had four pounds. So I'm hoping that somebody else will see this. Thank you so much for sharing this because that is the reality. Yeah. You are going to, especially women, you're gonna lose inches before you lose pounds. Yep. So this week's subscriber of the week is Jennifer. Hey, There's Jennifer. only one this week. And so guys, yeah, please go leave your story so we can have a bunch of them. We love seeing these. And if you don't have Facebook, leave us an email at stories at two crazy ZKetos.com and we can share it that way. Yeah. So this week's is Jennifer. Hey Jennifer. Jennifer wrote, I'm going to put her pictures up here while we're reading this. It says, I, today I hit a 50 pound weight loss. It's been eight months since I started the keto lifestyle. So happy that chronic pain from inflammation is gone and so many non-scale victories. I'm down five pant sizes. Wow. wow. I wanted to thank you for your encouragement and your wonderful weekly videos. The doctor told me to try keto and gave me no information. Thankful I found you on YouTube and I've been following ever since July awesome. of 2019. And uh, look at this. April, wow. they're kind of, they're all kind of sitting funny. June of 2019. Wow. Then April, November. You look absolutely incredible. I'm still flabbergasted that at least the doctor said try keto. Right. I'm sorry there was no further directions, but I'm so glad that you found our channel and I'm really glad that there's a doctor out there saying give it a try. You look absolutely gorgeous, just you, totally amazing, amazing. Amazing. Congratulations. We have comments from last week. Okay. And what we like to do is we like to pull comments from each week's Keto on the Couch if you're new, and we like to read them. So the first one is from Constance. Constance, hello. And Constance just wrote, everybody smells their food, right? Everybody smells their food. You Absolutely. have to. You have to smell your food. If you haven't subscribed to Constant Dunlap's channel, not only do you have to smell your food, but you have to go subscribe because yeah. she's awesome. Yeah. So September wrote. Hey, September. Make longer videos, please. I love listening to you guys. Bless your heart. <laughs> Thank you. That was actually in response to a couple of people making comments that our videos are too long and we need to, they politely said, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a tough week for comments. So again, yeah. continuing the non-scale victories, the fact that I didn't go and hit the snack pantry, I yeah. feel really proud of myself because usually 
that's another trigger for me is if I don't people please. Yeah, it's it's hard. I mean, I we we know that it's part of having a YouTube channel that you're going to get negative comments, and we don't get a lot. I think we get fewer than a lot of channels do. God's been really good. But it is still kind of hurtful sometimes when you read them, and especially when you're just trying to help people and educate and. So you guys are awesome for, number one, coming to our defense. Yeah. And just, you know, we try to give the information that we, like, believe in. And you don't have to listen to us. You don't have to agree with everything. I'm not right on everything. I have certain ways that I want to do things. But it's not necessarily the only way to do it. Can I tape that segment and make that a ringtone when you said, like, you're not always right? You know, like, as a husband and wife, you just want your to hear your spouse record that. And, like, I'll record the same message for you so it can be my ringtone. Like, I'm not always right. Like, I feel like even if I recorded you saying I'm not always right, I will probably get in trouble when I play that back to you one day. Well, probably, but <laughs> we should have it, I think, on tape. Okay, we could work on that. Ron Ron wrote. Hey, Ron Ron. Joe, you were so right about maintenance. I think mentally it makes you feel entitled to go back to some of your old ways, but life and weight is always changing. It really is. Every single year I'm changing, right? I mean, I've noticed even during the length of, of our channel, we've sort of been in, in the realm of where we want to be pounds wise, right? Mm -hmm. It's we're, we're always dancing around 10 pounds since we started the channel two years ago. Right. But everything that worked two years ago doesn't always work now. Like I, sometimes I have to bring myself all the way back to start. Right. And I would love to say that it gets easier every single day to always make the right decision. It doesn't. Right. We have to work at it. You know, now I'm moving into where I would like some more muscle definition. I'd like to tone. I have to keep working at it. There's never going to be a day where I can be like, all right, it's pajama pants for the rest of my life. Right. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. Yeah. If you didn't see last week's Keto on the Couch, I made the comment that I, I'm starting to believe that there's no such thing as maintenance when it comes to not just keto, but any eating lifestyle. And I've been really thinking about this a lot the last week. I think we're going to actually make a video about it. But it just comes down to, I feel like when you say I'm in maintenance mode, you're giving yourself permission to cheat. Is, yeah. is, is that is that even the right word? I don't know if the, it's the right word, but it, it's you're giving yourself permission to take your foot off the gas. Yeah. And I think whenever you give yourself permission to take your foot off the gas, you're going to run into trouble. I think there's always things to improve. I look at, even now, like I think differently about certain areas and aspects of my keto journey now than I did two years ago. I mean, and our channel's been around for a year and a half, and it, it, I'm sure if you go back, you're gonna see videos where we said one thing and we feel differently now. Well, that's because studies have come out, Things have changed. Opinions from doctors have changed more. You know, it's become more mainstream. So there's more knowledge about right. things. When we started keto, you didn't have all the keto products out there. So you didn't have to worry about no. like all of the different additives that they're putting into keto products. You know, you had different laws now. Like now, as of January 1st, we mentioned it the other day, as of January 1st, 2020, IMO is no longer considered a fighter. That's, you know, isomaltal oligosaccharides. That's not a fiber anymore. The, it's a sugar now. The longer you live there, there's more manipulation that has is generated in response to, to labels and things like that. So I really don't think that there is such thing as a maintenance mode, but I'm still thinking about like the right way to talk about this. Yeah. because. What comes to my mind is somebody like Keto Savage and Crystal. This beautiful couple, they work out, they've got great muscles. Do you think that there's some time in their life where they're like, okay, um, I'm in maintenance mode from working out. I'm, right. I'm done working out, I can let things go, and I'm still gonna be able to maintain my success without lifting weights. Yeah. No, of course not. For That's the most part, you're either in a bulk or you're in a cut. You're in one or the other, but it's, and I think it's rare that you're ever gonna find, I'm just good. Yeah. So Keto Cindy, keeping it real, over 50 wrote. Hey, Cindy. Thank you again for sharing all of your personal journey. I can't say enough how it keeps me moving forward in my journey. Mm. I appreciate the food reviews you do and hearing your input. 
I'm at a point now where I'm wondering if I need to lower my fat percentage. I lost well at 75 to 80% fat per carb manager, but I've come to a screeching halt for about five months. Did you ever find that to continue losing fat, you had to lower the actual fat? Um, I'm switching to a low 60% or lower fat percentage, but keeping the carbs low so it will maintain my protein. I'm kind of feeling like I'm grabbing in the dark, not knowing what to do at this point. I've had scale and inch loss has not been moving. Well, I'm sorry that you've been frustrated, mm -hmm. first of all, um, but I don't think that there's anything wrong with lowering your fat. Yeah, this is one of those things we were just talking about where our opinions have changed. When we first started keto, and this was the big thing, is that keto is high fat, moderate protein, low carb, which it still is. However, if you are trying to lose weight, your body has fat. So you are giving it fat, it's just coming off of your body instead of your diet. Now, that does not mean eat all protein and no fat because the fat is gonna satiate you. When you first get started on keto, you wanna eat a bunch of fat because it's gonna keep you full, it's gonna take you from one meal to the next. Right. But as you get more fat adapted, you don't need to do that because your body now knows, hey, I need fat, I can go right to the body stores. But one of the places that we've changed our opinion based on research and what more evidence have come out is, is it's okay to eat more protein because the big scare before was gluconeogenesis. Right. Like, oh my gosh, if you eat too much protein, the protein's gonna turn to sugar and then you're gonna be out of ketosis, which it turns out that's not true. Gluconeogenesis, which is where your body converts protein to glucose, is a demand-driven process, not a supply-driven. And what that means is, it does it when it needs the glucose, not just because there's extra protein. Right. So if you need to lower it, don't worry about it. We actually started lowering our fat percentage because, hey, you know what? I'm not as hungry, I don't need as much fat, and I've still got some fat on me to lose. Mine's on, on my thighs. <laughs> D Daz wrote, Hey D Daz. I appreciate your honesty with all of your reviews. I love the fact that you discuss the ingredients in the products and it helps me to learn what ingredients I need to keep an eye out for. Before keto, I never even bothered to look at ingredients. Same here. I think we were pretty, um, you know, bad about labels. Yeah. I, I think about what we would have done differently without keto, but just reading labels. Like how, how would our raising our children experience be, right? If we just looked and saw, wow, there's a lot of stuff where the lead ingredient is sugar. I right. mean, we would have changed a lot. Yeah, we definitely didn't read ingredients pre-keto and I'm proud that we read them now and that we've taught our kids that even if they're not doing complete keto, they're still looking at ingredients on things. Even if they buy a candy bar, I've seen them pick up a candy bar and be like, this isn't really a chocolate bar, this is a science project. I'm just gonna get the Hershey's bar that just says, chocolate in it. Ignorance is not bliss. Yeah, but even when we started keto, we didn't start out reading labels. I definitely look back at some of the things that I was eating when I first started keto, because I didn't know what I was doing. Right. I was getting like those Aldi's bars, the, uh, remember the elevation. elevation bars. They're like the Aldi's version of a Quest bar. If you go look at the ingredients in that, They're I don't know what I was bars. doing. And no wonder I was in the bathroom all the time. Yeah. Like the main ingredient in almost every part of it is maltitol. Yeah. So elevate your blood sugar and it makes you go to the bathroom. Debbie wrote. Hey Debbie. Thank you for sticking to your standards, having a plan and honesty in all you do. Thank you for your careful consideration of products while following keto specs along with your careful, easy to follow explanations. You both rock. Thank you so much for your encouragement. Gosh, that's awesome. This is all in response to our bread review. That was a toughie, but I'm glad we did it. I am very glad we did it. Sandri wrote. Hey Sandri. It's okay, most of us are here for the honesty. Some of us do keto for health issues and can't have those ingredients. Please continue talking about ingredients. I don't need to lose weight. I weigh 90 pounds, so it's not about that for me. I'm sure others are the same, and some people have allergies, so it's very important for you guys to be honest. Thank you for that. I really appreciate that. And yeah, I think if it was just like a weight loss channel, if we were just, our focus was weight loss, I feel like maybe we would let things slide, but it's because... I care about your health. Joe right. cares about your health and we want your everyday 
living to be good, right. not just that you look cute in your skinnier jeans. Yeah. I mean, the bottom line is some of these ingredients that we recommend that you don't eat, and then people like Dr. Bear and stuff recommend you don't eat. If you eat a little bit of them in moderation, will you probably continue to lose weight? Yes. I did. I mean, I had over 100 pounds to lose, and I was adopting the attitude or I was following the attitude of if it fits in my macros. But right. eventually, you are going to come to a halt because of those ingredients. But more importantly, when the ingredients that we recommend you don't eat, it's for health reasons, not necessarily weight loss reasons. I do want to say, though, in case no one has told you, your butt does look cute in those jeans. So Hope wrote, hey, Hope. I don't think the Aldi's bread tastes that great anyway. If I'm going to buy junk like that to eat, it at least needs to be worth it taste-wise. Seriously, I mean, if I'm going to eat wheat, I'm going to eat the brioche bread that my son is making fresh. Like, <laughs> delicious, buttery bread. Not this garbage. Yeah, I mean, I feel a way about anything, though. I mean, people say, well, are you ever going to cheat? I remember a couple years ago, you said, if you were to go off of keto, what is the one food you would immediately have? Remember you asked me that? Yeah. And my answer was pizza. But I'm not talking about like Costco pizza that could be or red, Pizza Hut. Red Baron. I'm talking about like, yeah, go to New York, get a fresh pizza. Now I just like eating the toppings. But if I'm breaking keto, it's not going to be for garbage. It's going to be something worth it. Personally, I just can't think of anything that's worth it anymore. I was trying to think if there is something that I would want really badly but yeah, I mean, I can't think of anything, but if there was, it would be awesome. Yeah. It wouldn't be 99 cent party pizza. <laughs> so Shanta wrote, Hey Shanta. Those are the food addicts that attacked you because that's what somebody that is addicted does. Someone that is on drugs attacks if they feel like you are trying to take something away. Wow, Shanta, thank you for that comment. That really like resonates with me because I am a food addict too and I have snapped Joe's head clean off when he has even suggested me cut back on something before. Mm -hmm. I can totally like understand that. Hurt people hurt people. Right. Like, yes, that really resonates. But thank you for saying that. That's really kind. Yeah. Pat wrote. Hey, Pat. I'm so sorry that you got so much negative feedback about the Aldi's bread. Like I already shared, I got some. Then I quickly realized that even if it had spot on ingredients, that this was a slippery slope for me. And the crazy thing is, I didn't even think I missed bread. The remainder of the loaf is now in the freezer. I will keep it, but it definitely will not be a staple of my diet plan. I need it to keep it in its place. You two rock, keep doing what you're doing. Man, I love that. Thank you for, for sharing that. And yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. If you enjoy it, we want you to have it. We want right. you to enjoy your life. Um, but knowing what you've got and putting your fence around it and deciding what that is, that, that's what it's all about. Yeah, and that goes back to that 12 things video. I mean, you're at least here able to recognize that like, wow, like this is a slippery slope. I better put it where it's not like in clear view. I was just watching a video, I think it was from Thomas DeLawler, and he was talking about cereal. Mm -hmm. And they said that families eat more cereal when the cereal is like out on the counter. I believe that. Because you see it, but if you were to tuck that away in a closet, you forget about it. And then we used to do, we were stockpilers of every kind of bad snack you could think of. Cause we would find it like on mega clearance and we would buy tons of, remember we, we one year bought like, I don't know, 30 packages of Oreos cause they were like 50 cents. If you kept them out on the counter, if you put them in the cupboard where everybody would see them, they'd be gone in a week. Yeah. We started putting them in the freezer. They would last a year. Why? Out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you're able to recognize that this is a slippery slope, which is what a lot of people in the comments said, like, wow, like all of a sudden I bought this, not even realizing now I'm eating four, five, six pieces of bread a day, which is, again, what our biggest concern was. It's, yeah. a, it's a trigger thing. Lisa wrote. Hey, Lisa. Wow, people turned on you for a bread substitute review. <laughs> they sound hangry. Maybe they need to consider increasing their fat intake to better control their insulin glucose. You would think that you personally shut down the bakery production and cut them off. Well, I mean, because people get protective of this of their drug of choice. Right. And, and I'm the same exact way. I am not, like, trying to be self-righteous. When I like something and I don't want Joe to tell me to stop, <laughs> then I, I will attack. I've got one that affects me. So Dr. Barry yesterday put up a video 
taking something away from me. And yeah, I'm going to leave that link over your head. Is that the dairy one? Yes, it is the dairy one. So it's a video called Is Dairy Scary? And it's really interesting. In fact, one of the things that he even brings up in there is that our body is not able to deal with drinking milk. We're not talking about all dairy, like cheese and stuff, but it's not able to deal deal with drinking milk beyond like the, between age two to five. Like you're, that's when you're meant to drink it to fatten you up and that it has protein and carbohydrates and fat in it. It's, it's a perfect food. But once you pass that two to five range, you don't need it anymore. I also thought it was really interesting that he said that like we shouldn't be giving our babies formula if you can't give them you, your milk, like a human milk, just give them cow or goat milk, but don't give them the formula because the formula is garbage. But that's another story. True, but one of the things he's talking about in there is there are different levels to dairy. You have milk and then you have half and half and you have heavy cream. And then beyond heavy cream, you have the yogurts, the kefirs, you know, the cheeses where the protein's been manipulated. Then you have butter and then you have ghee. And pretty much everybody can deal with butter, with ghee. Right. But different people have to eliminate things. And my first reaction when I saw that, now I'm reading the comments, I'm like, you are not taking away my cheese, right? You're I have upset. given up a lot of things and I am not giving up. I mean, I was super, I was yelling at the computer. Listen, like he better not tell me I can't have cheese, which he better wasn't. Not go there. He was saying like, if you're having issues, take a look at the cheese. But that was my first reaction. Like, no, 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 no. You're not taking away my cheese. It's funny because like, we can't go into anyone's house and remove things out of their pantry. Right. We're just suggesting, right? Right. So, and but that's the thing. It's like, oh my gosh, your your first response is to be like, are you going to tell me some information I don't want to know and right. don't want to hear? Well, I'm going to fight you. Right. Amy wrote. Hey, Amy. I removed a full trash bag of clothes from my closet. They were too big for me, which feels really good. But like Rachel mentioned, it is a real struggle for me to give them away. The bag has been in the back of my car for almost two weeks. I give clothes to charity organizations all the time, but I'm experiencing a mental block this time because I feel like I'm going to need the big clothes again. It's that little devil on my shoulder telling me, you're going to need those again. Wow. I am so glad that I'm not the only person that's ever experienced that. Um, I have driven around with clothes I have gone into thrift stores to shop with clothes for thrift stores in my trunk and didn't bring it in because I felt that exact same way. But you're not going back. Go ahead and donate those clothes because you're moving forward. You don't need them anymore. But I've, I've been right there with you. I know exactly what you're going through, but I want to encourage you, like, you ain't going back this time. I have to say that I had to get something into your closet the other day, and I feel like it's time for you to do another purge. Because All right. You're moving into my closet, the spare room closet. That spare room, your she shed, over. that was supposed to be a closet that we split 50-50. You've now crushed my suits, crushed my jackets. I have like this much room and you have this couch much room. I love you so much, but after being married for so long, you should know there is no real thing as 50-50 husband wife. <laughs> Slap a stick wrote. Hey, Christopher. When I order burgers without a bun, I often get asked if I want it on lettuce or wrapped in lettuce or extra lettuce. I just don't like lettuce enough to ruin my burger. No lettuce, please. Could they wrap the burger in another burger? Burger in another burger. You know, oh, wait, I got one for you. Bacon wrap burger. Like Ooh. no bun. Let's get some bacon. We got some burgers. We got to try this. Here's the thing. Get though. some bacon. Wait a second. Get bacon completely make like a weave of bacon, wrap it around the burger. A bacon weave. Stick it in the smoker for like an hour and a half. And then you pull it out. Like you've ever seen, what was that? The Kentucky Fried Chicken Sandwich that used chicken as the bread? Yeah. We're gonna use bacon as the bread. Here's the thing though. I'm, I mean, I will try anything but it better be a good mouthfeel to the bacon because sometimes bacon wrap stuff is like No, gummy no, no. And, We're going to smoke it like extra crispy. Extra okay. crispy. All right, now I'm on board. So Vicky wrote. Hey, Vicky. I don't eat burgers because I need a vessel to eat a burger. It's just the thing I have. I'd rather just not eat one if I can't have the bun. I also wouldn't pay $12 for a burger on lettuce when I go out to eat. I would just be thinking of how many burgers I could make at home for that same $12. 
Too funny, Joe. If a tiger is chasing me, the tiger wins. Yeah, the tiger wins every every time, just about every time. Um, yeah, no, something Vicky said really like resonates with me, and that is a lot of times if we're eating something that I can, that I am capable of cooking at home, right? Then a lot of times I'm thinking like, should we be eating this out, or am I like wasting a bunch of money? But sometimes I need to go out. I need to allow myself to actually go out and us eat outside of our bed every once in a while i need to eat a meal without pajama pants on <laughs> well one of the things that really hits me is when you're talking about you know like you need to have that bun for the burger otherwise you're not going to enjoy it and i think it's good to look at me like you know what i'd rather just not have it because otherwise you just end up missing what you can't have i mean and there's things that i look at you know i am not big into you know eating a lot of like cookies because I enjoy cookies when it comes to keto cookies most of the keto cookies that I have tried the store-bought keto cookies yeah. with the exception of the high key ones which is a hard one right they all taste the same to me they taste like almond flour and erythritol yeah like erythritol bombs a lot of times so I've gotten to the point where I would just rather not have cookies at all because all it does is remind me of you're not getting the cookie that you used to enjoy. Yeah. So when I want a cookie now, I'd rather have like one of my bars or I have some granola or I eat the high key little ones like that. But the regular ones, it's just not worth it to me because it's just, I don't enjoy that kind of a snack anymore. So Annette wrote, Hey Annette. What is the benefit of going over 72 hours? So she's talking about fasting. And honestly, if you're talking about like autophagy, that kind of stuff, there is not a huge benefit beyond 72 hours. I mean, there's something called like diminishing returns. And Thomas DeLawler has a great video on it. If I can find it, I will leave a link for it down below. It's, it's probably about a year old, but he talks about that, you know, like a lot of the benefits of fasting, like the autophagy and that kind of an aspect is gonna come between 36 and 72 hours. Beyond that, a lot of the benefits are going to be more mental, not so much like biologically. The one thing I would say is I think you are better off, and I, Thomas and are talking about the same thing, that you are better off doing multiple 36, 48 hour fasts in a month, like maybe doing one every other week as opposed to one long fast. Because what ends up happening is you're going to start slowing down your metabolism. And you're trying to do a 105, 120 hour fast once a month or like once every three weeks, there's a chance that you're going to not get enough food in and mess up your metabolism that way. You're better off doing like a 36 hour fast, getting the autophagy benefits, then eating for a week or two weeks and then doing another 36 hour fast and doing it that way. This way you keep getting that autophagy and the rebuilding and that kind of stuff. For me though, the benefit to a 72 hour fast was dealing with my can't do attitude. Uh, After the holidays, I had really cultivated a can't do attitude. Meaning I had worked myself into a position where I'm like, I can't fast, I can't make good decisions, I can't stop eating the snacks, I can't keep an intermittent fasting window of any real stability. And I needed to push through all of the can'ts. Right. And there's something about saying no, 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 and and cutting yourself off and being able to go 72 hours without eating that really makes you think, well, hey, I can do stuff. There's a challenge that I put for myself that seemed impossible when we started, and yet I was able to achieve success. So on the other side of that 72 hour fast was a can do attitude change. Right. So, and that was really what I needed even more than the autophagy. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the whole reason we went beyond 72 hours. It had nothing to do with health benefits or anything to do. It was more of to push ourselves. We got the 72 hours. We we're like, I feel great. Let's see if I can go further. Would I do another one that long in the future? Probably not. Again, it was just more of a challenge thing to prove to myself I can do it. But at 72 hours, you're going to have all of the health benefits that you're looking for. You know, it was just kind of a weird challenge thing to do, but I would not do it on a regular basis. So last one, Steph wrote, Hey Steph. I had wondered about those colorings. Can you please go in more detail about what is not good about caramel coloring? 
I just love Tabitha. Such sweet, big brown eyes that melt the heart. The tidbit about the negativity you both got on the bread really burns my hide. Aww. I totally agree with your opinions on it. The issue of the problems don't fall on you two. It falls on the naysayers. They don't want to take total responsibility of clean eating. If they don't care that they could be sabotaging their journey, then that falls on them. But they should not use you two as a whipping post. They need to do more research and grasp the difference between clean and dirty eating and respect others' opinions. I'm so sorry that the two of you had to deal with that last week. You have the support and love of so many. Please keep up your awesomeness of helping of those of us who really want your help and respect your helpful information. Thanks, Steph. Oh, my gosh. You're so sweet. Thank you. Thank you so much. Again, I'm, I don't want to even beat up people who do want to eat the bread. I don't have yeah. a problem with people who want to eat no the bread. No way. But we feel our job is to tell you what we think based on like the different studies that are out there, the fact that it is wheat and everything else. And we're going to continue to do that. Um, thank you for mentioning that about Tabitha. If you didn't know, by the way, Tabitha got into a little bout with a iguana. I fought the iguana and the iguana won. And no, I, well, she won. She won. It's dead. It's dead. But it did get one sucker punch. It got, a, it got a little bite on her ear, which got infected, which is why she's not out here because her whole side of her sh uh, head is now shaved. She's very embarrassed by it, honestly. Also, so she's kind of got bleach blonde hair because we kept pouring peroxide on it to try to clean out the it's infection. Like pouring. <laughs> but you did mention the thing about the colorings. We're going to end with this as the cat tries to knock over the camera. She just wants to rub up against it. Um, so caramel coloring is bad for a lot of different reasons, um, but it is a carcinogenic thing. It's full of a lot of different chemicals. Is it something I completely avoid? No, I mean, it, it, it shows up in a lot of things. I just avoid it as much as possible. It was really weird when I started drinking Zevia because there is no caramel coloring in Zevia. So every single flavor is clear. Yeah, and it comes down to why do we need to have that? And, and like, you know, I talk to people like, well, why do they have coloring? It's just because you, you kind of you like do. like it. You think with your eyes. You taste with your eyes sometimes. You know, presentation is everything. It's like, does everything mint have to be green? No, but you associate green with mint. And so a lot of these colorings are just not good for you. They're just cancer-causing agents. So I try to avoid them whenever possible. I'm not perfect at it, but I try. Yeah. So. Well, that is all of the comments for this week. Please leave some comments down below so that we can have some to talk about next week on episode 52. Of Q on the year. Couch. Happy anniversary, everybody. <laughs> so excited. Um, also, keep your eye on our Instagram. I'm going to leave a link for it down below. Sometime this week, I'm not quite sure what day yet, we're going to do an Instagram giveaway for some Keto Chow. It's going to be the Gourmet Bundle. It is going to be an Instagram-only uh, giveaway, just because I'd like to grow our Instagram a little bit. And you'll be able to have multiple entries on there. So keep your eye out for that. And don't forget about the Keto Chow and Sale this week, which is 20% off of one of the greatest flavors ever. Root Chocolate beer, toffee? Root beer flood. So please do us a favor. Hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next week. Bye. Bye. Can I tape that segment and make that a ringtone when you said like you're not always right? You know, like as a husband and wife, you just want your to hear your spouse record that. I'm not right on everything. 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 I'm not always right. 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 I'm not always right.